Over the last few years, the stigma surrounding mental illness has changed, making it easier for many people to manage their mental health. News Force An Yang talked to a psychiatrist about Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman's recent Meet the Press interview and the changing minds on sharing mental health issues. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman recently opened about his battle with depression on Meet the Press and expressed his fear that sharing this diagnosis publicly would negatively impact his career. Psychiatrist Dr. Joshua Weiner joins us now to talk about how the stigma over mental illness has changed over the years. Thanks for being here, Dr. Weiner. So first, can you talk about Senator Fetterman, who checked himself into Walter Reed to be treated for depression in February following a stroke the previous May? Is there a relationship between strokes and depression? Yes. So roughly a third to 40% of people post-stroke will have a depressive episode. Now, in John Fetterman's case, it was even higher because he had reportedly had previous episodes of depression. But just for the general population, the rate of depression does go up following having a stroke. Now, the reason we think this happens is not because you're just upset because you've lost functioning of, of your, you know, maybe your speech or your body. It may also have to do with the fact that you've damaged the brain and now you have inflammation in the brain. And as you and I have discussed many times before, anything that increases inflammation causes a worsening of how somebody does emotionally, and that could cause worsening of anxiety or depression. Now, the senator isn't the only public figure who has shared their struggles with mental health. How much of an impact do you think this has on overall impressions about mental health and the likelihood that people will seek help when they need it? Well, my hope and what I think I'm seeing is that over time, people are becoming more and more comfortable with sharing their experiences with mental health. I think that people at this point, you know, it's very different maybe than it was even five or 10 years ago. So I don't think it's that hard for people now to talk about some of these things, particularly if it has to do with things like substance abuse or alcohol or depression or anxiety. Certainly, I still think there is a stigma related to what I would call maybe more serious mental health challenges, things like really bad bipolar disorder and certainly schizophrenia. You don't hear people coming out talking about that. But, you know, the more that we're seeing people being willing to talk about this, certainly if there are people in the community that people look up to and they hear about this, it makes them more comfortable coming forward. But the more we hear this and the more people are comfortable talking about it, I think it does translate into people feeling a little bit more comfortable seeking help because still we have good data that shows that despite a large number of people struggling with mental health issues, it's only the minority that actually end up seeking professional help. So what have you observed in your 20 plus years of practice regarding the stigma of mental illness and the impact it's had on your patients? So I have definitely seen a decrease in the stigma. In particular, I see this in my work with teenagers. So these teenagers, it, they're just kind of funny. You know, they'll even sometimes, I mean, I don't love it if they get a phone call or something in the middle of an appointment with me, but they'll have no problem saying, oh, I can't talk right now. I'm with my psychiatrist. You know, it's something that they just are open to. And, I, you know, I think in some ways that's good. My one concern that I do have, though, is that I do have a concern that, and we've talked about this before, is that teenagers maybe are are a little quick to think that they have a psychiatric diagnosis rather than recognizing that some of the things that they experience are just natural progressions of life. So anxiety, everybody experiences. Highs and lows, everybody experiences. And hopefully they end up seeing somebody who has some discretion in that regard. Because what I worry about to some degree is somebody ending up getting a label and they end up thinking to themselves, well, I'm depressed or I have an anxiety disorder. And as a result of that, they feel like they're not capable of certain things. And they use that as an excuse to avoid certain things that they really should be facing head on. So, you know, look, everything has its pros and cons. Generally, I think it's a good thing that the stigma is lowering and people are seeking help. But I do think there are some negatives as well. And you mentioned it's a small percentage of people who need help actually seek it. What advice do you have for anyone who may be wondering if they may be actually struggling with depression? So I would say that if you are feeling like your mood or anxiety issues or whatever mental health challenge you might be experiencing is impacting you on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's been going on for at least a few weeks, then it's time to seek some help. And I think the first place to start is with your primary care doctor or your pediatrician. You see what they have to say, and maybe you allow them to start treatment because, in fact, 80%, of, at least in the world of psychiatry, 80% of medications that are prescribed to people and kids are actually prescribed by primary care physicians. I think that's generally okay as a starting place, but if you're not showing improvements or getting better within a month or, or certainly by two months, it's time to seek out a specialist like myself, either a psychiatrist or, or a therapist.
All right, Dr. Joshua Weiner, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.